Grace Goes to Washington. Written by Kelly DiPuccio. Pictures by Leuyen Pham. One Friday afternoon in April, Mrs. Barrington shared a large diagram of the three branches of the U.S. government. But Grace Campbell could not stop daydreaming about the upcoming field trip to Washington, D.C. Grace, do you know who's in charge here? Mrs. Barrington asked. Who's in charge here? Grace repeated. Principal Perez? A few of her classmates giggled. <laughs> well, said Mrs. Barrington, I suppose you could say Principal Perez is like the executive branch here at Wilson Elementary because she's the head of our school. But right now we're talking about the U.S. government. Sorry, Grace answered. The president, he or she leads the executive branch. That's correct, Ms. Barrington smiled. The president. The last bell of the day rang. We'll discuss this more next week, she announced. Student council members Grace and Sam, don't forget you have a meeting after school. At the meeting, classroom representatives were discussing their ideas on how to spend the money raised from their holiday bake sale. Thomas and his committee petitioned for new sports equipment. Grace and her committee thought new books for the library was the way to go. Principal Perez even offered her own suggestion. The music room sure could use some new instruments. Mr. Marshall, the media center teacher, listened carefully to all of their arguments and took notes. They're all good ideas, Grace later admitted to Sam. There's no way we'll agree before the vote next week. You know what I was thinking during the meeting? Sam asked. No, what? If Principal Perez is like the executive branch, I think the student council is kind of like the legislative branch because we're the elected leaders from each class and we help make decisions for the school. Grace considered Sam's comparison. Yeah, who knew so many people had a say in how to spend cookie money, she grumbled. The following day, Grace could hardly contain her excitement. It was finally field trip day. As the bus drove down Pennsylvania Avenue, cherry blossoms dotted the streets like pink pom-poms. Grace and her classmates visited the Lincoln Memorial, the U.S. Capitol where the legislative branch meets. And the Supreme Court building. That's where you'll find the judicial branch and Supreme Court judges, Sam pointed out. They decide if our rules and laws are fair. Kind of like Mr. Marshall does at our student council meetings, Grace added. During a tour of the White House, home of the executive branch, Grace's dream of becoming president felt more real. Their final stop of the day was the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial. Grace studied the words engraved on the monument and thought about their meaning. Make a career of humanity. Commit yourself to the noble struggle for equal rights. You will make a greater person of yourself, a greater nation of your country, and a finer world to live in. At recess the next day, arguments about what to purchase for the school grew more heated. Look at this crummy basketball, Clara complained. It's practically worthless. At least you have a ball, Fletcher groaned. There are two new books of the Ninja Wizard series, but our library doesn't have either one. Hannah lobbied the loudest for the new instruments. Well, I, for one, am sick and tired of playing the recorder in music class. Principal Perez is right. Grace glanced at Thomas, who was unusually quiet. She looked past him to see 
who he was staring at. Grace didn't recognize the boy sitting all alone. He must be new, she thought. He looked kind of sad. Just then the bell rang and students scattered. Wait, Grace called out to the boy. You forgot something. Grace handed him his sketchbook. I like your drawings, she said. Thanks, said the boy with a smile. Grace caught up to Thomas in the hallway. I have an idea, she said. A few days later, the student council's last meeting of the year was being called to order. Excuse me, Grace interrupted. Before we vote, Thomas and I would like to introduce you to someone. This is Amun. He's new to our school. We'd like all of you to consider one more option for how to spend the bake sale money. Together, they rolled out a big poster. We're calling it the Friendship Mall, Thomas said proudly. Amon helped us design it. It's a place where you can go at recess to let other students know when you need a friend, Amon explained. Next, Thomas spoke about their field trip to Washington, D.C., and Grace read a quote from Martin Luther King Jr. A finer, kinder world starts with us and the choices we make. She concluded, thank you for listening. Everyone clapped. Principal Perez wiped away a few tears. Mr. Marshall pounded his gavel. It's time to vote. After the ballots were collected from each classroom representative and the votes were tallied, Student Council President Grace Campbell peeked at the results and grinned. It's a unanimous decision, she announced excitedly. All members are in favor of the Friendship Mall. The room filled with happy cheers. Principal Perez took a seat and then, much like the president signs a bill into law, she approved the election results, making the decision official. Today you put your own wants and needs aside in order to serve others, she said, beaming. This is true leadership. This time, everyone agreed. Hey friends, it's me, Miss Olivia. Thank you so much for listening in to Grace Goes to Washington. Please support the author and illustrator of this book by purchasing your very own copy. I hope you enjoyed listening to this story as much as I enjoyed reading it to you. Until next time, my name is Miss Olivia. This is Miss Olivia Reads, and I cannot wait for you to join me for another reading adventure very soon. Bye, friends.